Teacher Mindy here with VIP Kid. So today I just wanted to go through some fun crafts you can do while we are on lockdown in our homes. So when life gives you this, instead of this, you can make some props and crafts for your VIP Kid classroom. You know the saying, when life gives you lemons, make lemonade? Well, life gave me this, empty toilet paper rolls instead of toilet paper. So what did I do? I decided to make props like any good VIP kid teacher would do. So the first one, simple, easy, I'm not even gonna make it in front of you, just gonna show you what I did, is a set of binoculars. So we're always talking about seeing and looking in class and using binoculars. I actually have been using our actual binoculars in class and it will be nice to have those back in the kitchen where we need them to see if there are any predators that get into our pasture with our horses and cows. So I can give that prop back to the kitchen where it belongs. So all we did with this is you take any kind of black tape. It could be black electrical tape. It could be black duct tape. This was black Gorilla Tape, which was actually kind of difficult to work with, but my husband was kind enough to help me. So we first wrapped the tape around each individual toilet paper rolls, and then we wrapped it just a center piece around the middle here to kind of give it more of a binocular look. And we tried to smush it down in the middle a little bit. Then I used a hole punch and punched some holes in the side and just tied some string on it. And there you have it. Quick, easy, simple binoculars that you can use in class. If you have young children at home, they might enjoy walking around and playing with these as binoculars and going on. I know a lot of um, children right now are going out on a um, bear hunt and people are putting teddy bears in their windows. So it might be kind of fun when you're out on a walk, take your binoculars, your play binoculars and look for the bears. Now, the next thing that I made is this really cute little owl. So in the classroom, we talk about birds a lot. So you could use this owl as a bird. Um, I'm going to be adding it to the tree in my new background, but I will also be using it as a prop later on. So an owl. So here's what I did first. Here are all the supplies I used. So you're going to use some glue. I like to use tacky glue just because it dries so much faster, but you don't have to. It's just my preference. Um, I get really impatient with things, so I wanna get it dried as fast as I can. A pair of scissors. And then I happen to have these googly eyes, a variety of sizes. So I picked the biggest ones that I had. And then I punched out a ton of these little circles. So they are um, three quarter inch circles. And I do a lot of card making and paper crafting. So I have a big variety of circle punches and different punches in general. So I was able to utilize this on my owl today. And then I also punched out an oval for the little wings, two of those, you'll need two ovals. And this measured about one and three quarters inch by three quarter inch. That was just like the rough estimate. Um, and then you'll also need a little triangle, an orange triangle for the nose. I just freehand cut a little triangle for that. And then you'll need base paper. And the base paper is six inch by four and a quarter inch for the base. I chose to do a dark brown for the base and then a lighter brown for the feathers and then a dark brown for the wings. If you could make it whatever color you want. I got this idea off Pinterest. I saw pink owls and blue owls and all sorts of colored owls. Um, you might even want a bigger contrast between your browns, so maybe even a lighter brown here just to give it a little bit more contrast. 
So basically, all you're gonna do is start with your glue. I like to keep it in my toilet paper tube upside down just so it's very quick and easy and it's already at the tip. And you're going to glue all over your paper. And then you're going to just kind of wrap it around your toilet paper tube. It helped to kind of curve it as you go, just so it fit it. It was fitting a little bit better, a little more form fitted is what I guess I wanted to say. So here you go for your base. If you have some little clips on hand, you could clip it to let it dry. Again, using the tacky glue, it dries really fast. The next thing that I did is I bent down at the top. Can you see that? I just kind of bent it in like that and bent this side in like that. And then I put a little bit of glue and that gave it the pointy ears that an owl has. Okay, so you're just bending in bending in and you're done. Super quick and easy. It helps when you take the cap off your glue. <laughs> okay, so go ahead and bend in, bend in, and hold and glue it down. You can always stick your fingers in here just to kind of squish it together a little bit easier and just give it a little hold. And then I like to wipe off the excess glue. I'm definitely a very generous gluer. If I used a little bit less glue, I wouldn't have to do that all the time, but I do like to put a lot of glue on. Okay, so then all you're gonna do is start adding your little circles. And I did them from the bottom to the top so I'm going to lay them out and one way to do it fairly quick is if you lay them all out, just put a little dot of glue on each one and off you go. So I used 32 of these little circles on my owl. Some did the back. I did not do the back of my owl. Figured it's not going to show. It doesn't really matter. Some put a little tail on the back of their owl. You could do that. But all you're gonna do is spread them out, dot a glue on each one, put it on, and boom, you're done. With the feathers, at least. I will list the supplies down below in the video. And this video is going to be a multi-part series where I'm gonna be showing you one or two different um, toilet paper tube props each day. So you'll have something to do with all those toilet paper tubes that you have. And kind of a fun indoor activity to do while we're being stuck inside and quarantined. Now, some of them, the Pinterest pins I saw, it looks like the feathers were not glued down super well. Like they kind of had a little flappiness to it. I glued mine down fairly securely on this first one and then had kind of wished that I hadn't done that. I think the owl looks a little bit more realistic with it not glued down quite as much. Okay, so I'm going to start on the good side. So that means the side that does not have the seam on it. 
and you want to go, I would go decide what's your front, oops, and you want to go all the way even with the bottom, and you just overlap it a little. It doesn't have to be overlapped a ton. my bottom layer layer oh, and they're falling off I probably could use a little bit more glue I was extra skimpy on my glue and now I'm wishing I would have used a little bit bigger dots on it all right let's let that sit for a second and I'll put a little bit bigger dots on my glue You know, there's never a happy medium with the glue. I always have too much or too little. So I think the students will really enjoy seeing these props. It'll be something fun and different for them to see when we're studying birds in the classroom. And I'm making a mess with my glue. Okay. So now what I do for my second row is I go ahead and I kind of put the bottom of the circle in between where these two circles meet. You don't want them to be a super lined up look. You want it to look like they overlap a little but not um, they don't need to be so precise because nothing in nature is perfect, especially me. So while I'm gluing the circles on, I just wanted to tell you a little bit about how my VIP kit it, um, is going right now. So I am working from home and I've been teaching in the mornings and then I also teach one or two lessons in the evening just depending on what gets booked. So if you don't know this, with VIP Kid, you get to pick what time slots you would like to open, and then the parents or the learning partners go on and they pick a teacher and they book based on who's available at what time and what teacher they wanna book. So if you're fortunate enough to get some regulars, which I have some regulars now, after six months with VIP Kid, um, they will go on and will typically book you the same time, the same day each week. So you're moving through the lessons with them. Um, you know, you do one lesson at a time. It's very common for the students to do multiple teachers. So they might take a lesson with me, they might go take a lesson with someone else, and then they come back to me. So you might have them once a week or twice a week, but then in between, they might also go and take a lesson with another teacher. So we have a great teacher portal where we get to leave teacher to teacher feedback. And so we can see if they've had a lesson with someone else in between our lesson and what the teacher had to say about that lesson. Like maybe they need to work on the TH sound or maybe they need to work on the word binocular, whatever. Um, but, or maybe they had bad internet connection or they were 15 minutes late for class. All of that information we write up in our teacher to teacher feedback. So the write-up does take a little bit after class. When you're done teaching, it's not like, ooh, I'm done. You have a few minutes of writing some feedback to the parents, and you have a few minutes of writing feedback to the next teacher. If the lesson was hard, you can even write feedback to the learning partner 
and tell them this level is too hard for the student, they need a level adjustment, or too easy, or if the student did something and had some really bad behavior, you can write to the learning partner and tell them to please speak to the parents about whatever. So the learning partner is the one who communicates with the parents. Um, you only communicate with the parents through your feedback. You don't ever have to call them. You don't ever have to have a parent-teacher conference. Woohoo! Those were not fun to have when I was a brick and mortar teacher. Um, but the learning partner can relay messages to the parents. And of course you can also in your feedback. And then the parents can leave feedback for you. So when you're done teaching and you're done giving your feedback, they can go on and give feedback about the lesson as well. So that's how we communicate with each other. So I am still not certified for every level that VIP Kid offers. I have to teach um, 400 classes in order to be certified for some levels and I'm at like 340. So I'm getting close to being able to certify for some more. Um, I also need to move off of my basic level five certification, which means they put you, when you get a new certification, they will give you a basic certification and that means you're allowed to teach anywhere from five to 10 classes. And then the learning partners will, or someone at VIP Kit, maybe not the learning partners, will review your lessons and see if you're doing a good job on that level. And if so, they will give you an advanced level five certification. So I have had my basic for a while in level five and I am just waiting to get booked with more level five students. I need one more to get moved to my advanced. But because they were short on level six and level seven teachers, they did let me go ahead and certify for six and seven, which I have the basic of those as well. So I'm just waiting to get booked for some older students. My understanding is the way we get booked is if we have gotten five Apple feedback from students and parents from like level three, then you're like marked in their system that, hey, they're a good level three teacher. So then you keep getting booked for level three. But if you haven't ever gotten to teach level five for level six, they don't know yet if you're good at level five and level six. I personally like all the levels. I love all the levels, I really do. Um, the fun part about having a different level all the time, just like when I was a reading specialist in the brick and mortar classroom, I had anywhere from kindergarten up to fifth grade and it was just nice, I think the little ones with VIP Kid can be exhausting. They really can, you use a lot of energy in those classes. But the older ones, they can be sometimes a little bit of stinkers because they're teenagers and they wanna be on their phone or a different screen playing a game instead of on the VIP Kid screen. So that can be frustrating. And I feel bad that they're wasting their parents' money. So parents are paying a lot of money for our classes and they're wasting it. Um, but I've had others that are 13, 14, and super sweet and take it very seriously and they're working hard because they want to get into the best high school and the best college and the best everything so they can become a doctor someday or they can have a great career someday. So it just kind of, depends. I do like the variety of the levels, I guess is the biggest thing. Okay, so I got all my little circles on. Next, I'm going to go ahead and add my wings to this next part. So that's just a little tidbit to give you about the IP kid and how it's going. Right now, I was staying fully booked, which for me 
is about 25 classes a week. That's all I like to teach. And I do take Friday night and all day Saturday off. I need a day off. Some of my teacher friends with, I do have, do have VIP kid teacher friends now. So excited. I was worried I wasn't gonna make any friends. You know how I am about my friends. Um, anyhow, I am now putting on my Google eyes. So just kind of look and see where about the middle is and add the big Google eyes to it. So anyhow, some of my VIP kid teacher friends do not take any days off, but I find I really need a day off to recharge. I really need that. Um, I look forward to my Friday nights and my Saturdays, but weekends are big days for us to teach, so I usually teach on Sundays. Um, I only take the day and a half off, Friday nights and all day Saturdays off. Just give myself a little bit of a weekend, have some time with the husband. He seems to enjoy not hearing my alarm clock go off at five in the morning on Saturday. Um, they make fun of me because my alarm clock is the song Rise and Shine and Give God the Glory, Glory, Children of the Lord. So my daughter and my husband go a little crazy with my alarm clock going off and then my classroom is in our home office which is right off our master bedroom so he will usually go into the guest bed or out on the couch or something while I'm teaching because you can't teach quiet you have to teach with a lot of enthusiasm so he will move to a different room in the house and get some more sleep while I get up and start teaching. Okay, so here is my owl that I made. Here's the first one, here's the second one. What I'm gonna do with all of the second props that I make. So I've already made one as my sample to show you. And with the second prop, I am going to do another giveaway at 150 subscribers. I think I'm at like 117 right now. So at 150 subscribers, I am going to do another giveaway. And in that giveaway, I am going to do a box filled with some of my toilet paper props in them. I only made one of the binoculars, so that won't be in the box, but the owl for sure will be in the box. I have two of those now. All right, there you have it. So when life gives you empty rolls of toilet paper instead of full rolls of toilet paper. Make the best out of it and make a craft and a prop that you can use in your classroom. Again, if you want to screenshot this, these are the directions in the sizes that I use to make my little owls. And I will be back soon with part two of toilet paper crafting with VIP Kid Teacher Mindy. Thanks for watching. I hope you had fun. Bye.